All right, Kiki, so what are we talking about today? Sex and why science is bad at studying it. Hey, science fans, I'm Julia Wild here for D News. And I'm Dr. Kiki here from This Week in Science. Julia, do you ever think about sex? Yes. But don't tell science that. It's surprisingly bad about studying female sexuality. Sexuality and women, we're just kind of seen as being this one certain thing. Keepers of monogamy, right? We're not supposed to think about sex. We only do sex every once in a while. For a long time, science just didn't study female sexuality. It didn't even think it was a thing. Like, if you look at hysteria in the Victorian era, hysteria was seen as a wandering womb that people's wombs could wander all over their body and then they'd have to be massaged back into a place. And yes, it was essentially masturbation. They would have doctors do this to induce paroxysms. They weren't orgasms. They weren't orgasms. It had nothing to do with their sexuality whatsoever. Totally disconnected. Things related to female sexuality have always often been related only to male sexuality. It's like the 50s or 60s when researchers really got started looking at female sexuality. Still it's been in the context of male sexuality. There's the whole evolutionary psychology perspective based on our closest primate cousins like chimpanzees. Men are the aggressors. Men are always the ones with the sexual thoughts. You know, they're the ones who initiate and get things right. moving. Right. right. And that's kind of looking at just one of our closest relatives and completely disregards like bonobos, which are a matriarchal, peaceful society who kind of has sex to make better social bonds. I think it's the rhesus macaque monkey that researchers have followed around and seen that the females in that species are ones that go after the males and basically stalk them like prey. <laughs> so we can't look at what, what apes and monkeys do and compare it to us. We can't even look at what our ancestors did. That's another branch of evolutionary psychology that tries to take like social norms now yeah. and, and apply it to what our ancestors did to kind of justify what we do now. It's really circular Super logic. Super circular logic. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the other idea. Women, because we have only a limited number of eggs, Sex is only related to having babies, right? And so men have limitless sperm, right? So, so they get to have all the sex they want. Exactly. And women have to be more choosy. We got into like the physiological science right. of what actually happens and how it happens. Um, research has shown, who was it, the Meredith, Meredith Chivers. Chivers? Meredith Chivers. Yeah. She studied arousal patterns in women and measured um, blood flow to the genitalia and showed men and women various videos. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that they didn't have the proper equipment, really. They looked at the blood flow to the vagina rather than the clitoris simply because that's the way the equipment was designed, not necessarily because it had a scientific basis. Right, and so the, the fact that they're just looking at one area mm -hmm. as opposed to the area that's thought to be much more sexually stimulating and related to arousal, mm -hmm. Um, it's just how relevant is that research? How relevant right. is it to what's actually going on in the female psyche, in the female body? So there's been some research looking into a drug that's kind of the equivalent of Viagra, but in women. Yeah, it's really interesting that we've had Viagra, the libido-enhancing drug, so to say, for men since 1998. But we're right. just now in clinical trials for a female version of the drug. On top of that, like they're, they're completely different drugs. So for men, it's a physical factor of right. blood flow. Mm -hmm. Viagra increases blood flow. For women, it's blood flow, but it's also psychological. There's emotional stuff going on. So the new drugs that are being tried out, Librido and Libridos, are a mix of testosterone, which boosts up the female sex drive a bit, and another drug that increases blood flow and also interacts with dopamine. How should we be looking at it? Is it fixing something that's wrong, or should we be looking at it from a cultural standpoint? Right. And there's also concerns of, well, what if it makes women who are actually more sexual? Are they going yep. to become too sexual? And the FDA, FDA is actually concerned that women are going to become hypersexualized. What is the normal female sexuality? As we say on D News, more research is clearly needed. <laughs> Lots more, Lots more research. Will changing the story 
actually change the science. So join the conversation. What do you all think? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to DNews. We have new episodes every day of the week. You can find me on Twitter at Dr. Kiki. And I'm on Twitter at Julia underscore SCI. Thanks for watching, guys.